Alright guys, we're back for another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem figure unboxing. So this time around we've got three of the four villains from Wave 1. We've got Superfly, we've got Bebop, and we've got Rocksteady. So let's go ahead and pop these open and we'll take a look at these figures. So why don't we go ahead and start with uh, the main man himself, the main villain of the film, Superfly who, from the trailers we've learned, is being voiced by Ice Cube. And let's read his bio. It says, Superfly, a highly intelligent humanoid fly. Superfly has lived in hiding his entire life, slowly amassing power in the criminal underworld. He's clever, charismatic, and confident, and behind those eyes lies a sinister plan that is unlike anything the turtles have faced before. So we've got the Mutant Menace Meter, and he's rated at 5. And I think those are, yeah, the canisters of ooze. The Mutant Mutagen ooze, I believe. So, yeah. And, I mean, I've, I've always been a pretty casual, like, Ninja Turtles fan. Growing up, I watched them probably a few different iterations, but I was never, like, a hardcore fan. Uh, so, for me, this is a new character, but, I mean, he, he looks really cool. He looks great, so let's go ahead and, and pop him open. And I really like that they have Ice Cube as the voice for him in the film. Ice Cube's got <laughs> such a, like, an intimidating voice, so for him to be, like, the leader of, like, the gang, uh, I think it's gonna... It's going to be pretty fun. So we've got this twist tie there. It looks like he's got his wings actually like, oh, it's got some of these little rubber bands. Let me grab something up. Just cut those off. Make it this way easier. There we go. So we've got his weapons rack. It's got like a fly swatter there, which looks pretty cool. And then, I wonder if this is, oh no, that comes right out. So we've got his main blaster there. And then we've got one of his wings here underneath the feet. We've got super fly out of there. And I think we might have to cut out, oh, no, I was able to pop that right out, so let's get that out of the way. So we've got his, his wings there, and it looks like you put in these two, and then this one pops right in like that. Okay, there we go. So, okay, let's, wow, let's just kind of take it in. So like I said, I'm not really too familiar with him, but he looks he looks pretty intimidating. So you can see on one of his feet he has like this shoe that he's just like popping out of, which leads me to to think then that he he must have been human at some point and he got hit with the ooze and is now super fly. Yeah, because he's like ripping out of his clothes here. So you can see he's got like one huge arm, which doesn't, you know, doesn't bend too much. It kind of goes up and down. You can move like the little, I don't even know what you'd call this, like a pincer. Uh, that kind of twist. It doesn't open. I thought it would, but it doesn't. Uh, this arm, you've got a bit of movement there at the elbow. You can move that pretty good. And the legs are what surprised me. I, I wasn't expecting it to bend. I thought they were just going to be, you know, kind of stuck in place. But no, you can actually, like, twist these around quite a bit. And then bend them up and down at the knee. So hopefully that makes him easy to, to stand. And you can see there the wing just popped, like, right off when I was trying to get his gun. So hopefully that's not too much of a problem. Either that or I didn't really get him in there, right? Okay. That looks good.
So we'll just set him here for now. And let's see if he stands. I kind of feel like he wants to tip back. So I might just take... Yeah, there he goes. I might just take some, like, playing around with him. Kind of angling him just right so that he stands. Now... There we go. I think that was it. So you kind of got to like bow the legs outwards and it looks like that'll get him to stand. And we'll put his, his little weapons accessory rack right behind him. So I think the next one we'll go with is Bebop. So we'll take a look here at the front of the packaging. Let's take a look at the back. And let's go ahead and read the bio. Bebop. Maybe Bebop may be a jacked up warthog mutant, but he likes to roll in style. He's always sporting some killer shades and is never too far from a boombox. Mutant Menace Meter 3. Three canisters of the, of the ooze there. So, the first thing that stuck out to me is his, his tattoo, which uh, it's probably some joke about it saying mom, but it's you know, for us it says wow, but when he looks at it, he, he sees the word mom. And he's got the, the iconic look, the, the shades, the cool hair. So let's go ahead and take a look at him. Get him out of the packaging. There he is. Okay. Uh, so we've got the drill gun. We've got the weapons rack. Let's go ahead and get... I'm tied and out of there. Okay. Oh, this is strapped on there. Let's see if we can tear it. If not, we'll just cut through. There we are. Okay, so for his weapon rack, it looks like we've got a trash can lid. This looks like a club, honestly, like wrapped up like barbed wire or something. And then another drill weapon and the knife. And it looks like Superfly wanted to tip over. Let's see if there we go. So we'll put Bebop's weapon track there. And I think that's answering our question <laughs> of whether or not he is going to stay on, you know, whether you display him on a shelf, how long he'll last. Might have to lean him up against something. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Bebop. Let's get him out of here, actually. Okay. Oh, and this one, they did tie it down. I thought it would be easy to come out just like super flies. So we'll have to cut that rubber band there. Okay. Okay, so we've got the drill gun. And this thing is, I mean, it's pretty massive. You can see in proportion to his arm. <laughs> it's huge. We'll just put it in his hand while we take a look at the figure. So, looking at him, doesn't, you know, swivel at the hips. That's all one solid piece there. His legs feel pretty like short and stubby, but they do move. You can see there, they bend pretty well at the knee. I like that they have like the knee pad on there. We've got the shoes. Pretty cool. We've got his iconic shades. He's got the, the nose ring. The tusks coming right out of the mouth. These are pretty cool. Pretty menacing when you're going up against the turtles to have some, some turtle shell uh, shoulder pads there. You can see that he does have like some details here. He has a chain that's going around his waist. And you can even see his tail here. But it doesn't look like they bothered to, to paint those the, the flesh tone color for his tail. So I guess you can just pretend, no, I was going to say you could pretend like it's in his pants, I guess, but you can see that they even 
but the detail of it like ripping out the back there so they just did not decide to, to paint that I guess we got the belly button ring got some spikes on the bracelet here and it looks like I wasn't sure what's going on with the fingers but when you look closely you can see like the the hair like it's kind of like around like the hoof so yeah I think that's what they're going for they're going for the, like the look that it's actually a hoof for his fingers for his hand there but he looks really cool actually he looks great so I mean growing up I had a few turtles figures but I never had really much of the of the villains and of the villains I was only really familiar with like Shredder of course but Bebop and Rocksteady were two that I was well aware of. I knew them by name. Didn't know much of their backstories, but I did recognize them. Okay, so that's two down. And let's take a look at the, the last one here, which is Rocksteady. Oh, and I think uh, to, to touch on... Bebop one last time. He's being voiced uh, by Seth Rogen. So that that should be fun. Seth Rogen, you know, you know some people don't like him, but he, he's pretty funny. So that'll be fun to have him voicing Bebop. And then as for Rocksteady here, he's being voiced by John Cena. So good little comedic duo there between the two of them and let's see if we can get this these rubber bands have given me some trouble i should have grabbed some scissors so let's take a look at the weapons rack really quick for rocksteady some huge guns a sledgehammer a knife and i think that no that's like a manhole cover it looks like you use that as a shield so that's pretty cool. We'll set that down there. And then we've got his main weapon. Let me go ahead and see if I can cut through the rubber band. Okay, so we've got his main weapon here. And as you can see, they had to remove they had to remove one of the arms. To get them to fit in the packaging so we'll go ahead and stick that in there now and let's see how difficult it is so no is that it okay i think it's oh now there it is <laughs> all right so we've got that in so here we've got rock steady so let's take a look at him really quick so as far as the head goes it's kind of a weird movement there doesn't really have much of a neck. It moves like side to side. Got some teeth sticking out. His horns. His arms don't go up too far because of this shoulder here. But you got the swivel there in the wrist. Bends at the elbow pretty nice. Got some nice detail there for the, for the arm hair. Forgot to color that one in. If they already did this, they might as well have done that, but not too noticeable. As for the legs, they also look kind of like short and stubby, kind of like Bebops. But you can see there, that looks kind of weird, honestly. No rotation at the ankle or anything. Unlike Bebop, though, he does twist here. So you can twist it or you can push it up or down and then the knee joint is super weird there like I said let's see how he stands oh he's actually pretty solid okay and then not much detail on the back he's got his bandolier there and I'll give him his gun to hold on to okay cool and then super flies weapons racks. 
There it is. Okay, so looking at them, you know, Superfly hasn't fallen in the last few minutes, so that's a plus. I think we finally got that down. Uh, as far as the figures go, overall I'm pretty happy, like I said. Uh, I'm not a huge collector of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. I'm pretty familiar with them, like I said, a casual fan. Uh, recently I had caught the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that was on Netflix. And that's actually what, like, re-sparked my interest and, and hooked me. I didn't even realize that was a series. I just watched the movie, really enjoyed it, started to get into some of the IDW comics, read The Last Ronin, and then this last trailer uh, for the new movie coming out just, you know, it, it's it's got my attention. So I'll definitely be checking that out. I'm really happy with these figures. Overall, you know, for, for $10, it's a, it's a great deal. I'm sure there's there's better versions out there of each of these characters, but for ten bucks and you know to get these in the hands of of casual fans like myself, of kids who they're meant for, you know th these are some great figures. So I'm excited to to grab a few more. Uh, I think I'm only missing one of the villains from Wave One. Uh, we can take a look at the box here. Of course, I'm missing all of the turtles. But if you checked out my other video, I opened Splinter. I opened the exclusive Turtle Tots from Target. So still a few that I'm missing in the wave. But uh, I've been enjoying, you know, collecting them and, and opening them. So, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments below about, you know, the, the, the wave overall. Have you been picking these up yourself? If so, what's your favorite figure? And are you going to check out the new movie? You know I am. So let me know in the comments what you think. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.